Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for the opportunity to get to speak with you today. My name is Walter Holmes, K5WH. Today, we're going to talk about digital voice over HF, specifically around Codec 2 and FreeDB, and a couple of other things along the way. Some of the things we're going to explore today are the most popular methods, most common today. A couple of different digital voice solutions that are out there and have been out there in the past. But I did want to mention those because they were a great setup for what has evolved into what we're using today with FreeDB. Some of the advantages, some of the disadvantages, the hardware required, the type of software that may also be required, what the software looks like and some of the different configurations of such. Some links to the technology, where you can find these, how you can get to it. And some of the things not presented today, but certainly available for a conversation, whether we do this in a breakout room or catch me offline or something like that, or around how FreeDB is also being used and being tested right now for VHF and UHF uh, methods and some potentially new hardware that may come out in the future to take advantage of that, these other modes. So some of the most popular methods of the, uh, the past uh, specifically around the AOR device. You may have seen that many years ago. It's still available today in some areas. It's a uh, hardware appliance device. Uh, it was used quite a bit many years ago, made for a very simple way to get on digital voice uh, on an HF quite easily. Well established back then, it was 2.3 kilohertz wide. Uh, WinDream software, we used that for many years long ago. It's no longer being used today, but it was a great setup for what we're doing today. FDMDV was an excellent way, kind of our first entry of a good, complete software solution with a very nice GUI interface and such. It did use a proprietary codec. Uh, so this software is no longer being used today, but it started out using 1.2 kilohertz. And part of that major advantage was about 15 years ago when we started using this software, one of the problems that we had was a lot of crowding on the HF band. So a narrow band solution was very, very exciting to try. It helped us squeeze in between a lot of sideband activity it made things pretty tough to, to have a wide digital signal in there. D-Star has been around for quite some time. It's built into some of the ICOM radios used on HF today, about six kilohertz wide, quite a bit wider than even a voice conversation, of course. And then now what we're doing today with FreeDV, with Codec 2 Voice, and it's based on the FD-MDV modem, and has a bandwidth of about 1.2 kilohertz to 1.5 kilohertz, depending on which mode you've selected. But this is a quick look at what the AOR device was and is, I should say it that way. Uh, it is a, an appliance device. You plug a microphone directly into it. You make your connection between the device and your radio, the speaker and microphone jacks connections on your radio, and then you're on the air. Uh, very simple to operate that way. You are limited to their microphone unless you connect a different style microphone to it, I guess. The ICOM D-Star options, there are a couple different radios listed here, uh, but they're available and certainly ICOM has done a great job of coming out with newer models all the time incorporating D-Star into the radios. 
more common with the VHF and UHF side, but uh, definitely still available on, on HF also. The Smart Mic SM1000, we'll talk a little bit about that further uh, today, but uh, this, this is designed specifically for 3DV. Uh, this device cost about $2,000, $2,200. <laughs> anyway, it is flashable. So as new modes come about, uh, it is easy to update this device. Uh, you don't need a computer at all with this device, much like the AOR appliance device. Uh, this one is a little bit unique in that it actually has a speaker. If you see the large holes at the top there, uh, as well as a microphone element inside. You make the connection between that rig connector, basically just a D8 cord, and we'll plug directly into the D8 connector on some of the more newer HF radios today. And then you have a jumper set inside the unit that you can wire together to bridge your connections between the what it takes for this device and your particular radio. If you don't have the D8 style connector, there are the eighth inch connectors there at the bottom uh, that you can run uh, directly to your radio, interface it whatever way is necessary. Uh, you can actually pick this up and there's a push to talk button on the side of it, not shown in this picture, that you can pick it up just like a microphone. Now granted, it's not very ergonomically set for the palm of your hand, but it's very, very functional. Now in my case, I run this in my mobile vehicle. So uh, I actually have a headset that plugs into this, as well as there's a connector on here for a microphone, uh, external microphone. I have a little simple toggle switch that I can trigger to, uh, to go into transmit as needed. And so here's uh, kind of what it sounds like. Uh, it's a digital audio stream. I wanted to put this in here because some people may not even know what digital voice sounds like, or in this case, the free DV digital voice. And quite often people think it's just regular noise on the band. And unfortunately, sometimes people start transmitting right over the top of us. So I thought it was worth uh, spending just a few seconds to uh, kind of play back what it sounds like when uh, when you hear it on the band, so you'll know what to listen for. So that's what it sounds like uh, from just the digital audio sound. But here's what it sounds like once that has been decoded as to what actually comes out of your speakers when it's coming through the FreeDV software. Yeah, I've noticed between uh, Ohio and Texas, uh, sometimes on 20, we get some really, really strong propagation. I know I run JT65, and uh, I usually try to run like milliwatts when the band's good. I, I have fun seeing how low I can go. My K3, uh, you know, we're going to have reliably to about 200 milliwatts uh, measured. Uh, you can command it down to a tenth of a watt, but measuring it with a terminating watt meter, it really only goes down to about 200 watts. So there we have it. That's uh, kind of what it sounds like. If you notice, uh, the audio is not super high fidelity for, for anyone that is expecting extreme high quality audio like that. They will probably be disappointed in, in digital voice of any kind, regardless of which mode is being used. Uh, but it is very easy to understand and it can be even improved if you want to make it even better. We'll talk about that in just a couple of moments here. So here's uh, kind of what we're talking about here. So what does it take to make this work with our radios today? So basically any radio, any, uh, radio today that has USB connectivity, all, almost all newer radios have some kind of USB connection or even some like in the flex world, uh, an ethernet connection. But as uh, long as you have a connection to the radio interface, if not, you can use other type of digital interfaces uh, like signal links and things like that is another way to do it. 
But if you're familiar with what it takes to connect uh, the radio to your computer for uses of PSK31 or FD8, WSJTX type software, things like that, uh, this would be no different whatsoever from, from that side of it. Uh, the software is free for multiple flavors, Windows, Linux, and the Mac as well as there's been some development taking place in the Android side, but that seems to have slowed down. I haven't seen much movement in that area for quite some time. Uh, FreeDV is an open source software using the Codec 2 standard. Uh, major advantage there being open source. Uh, again, as I mentioned earlier, people can, uh, can download the software components and add enhancements if they so choose to can be integrated with the 6000 series flex radios as an FDV button. Uh, this was in the early models of the flex 6000 was available, uh, which made it very, very nice where you could literally just push a button and whatever audio interface you had set up with your flex radio, you would use that and no computer was necessary. Uh, as I understand it, uh, that function is not working any longer, but, but Flex has been uh, uh, looking at, at what it might take to take care of that in a future release. So we're hoping that uh, that may be taken care of before too very long. Uh, a key uh, takeaway of this is that it's very narrow bandwidth, uh, less than an SSB signal, meaning 1.2 to 1.5 kilohertz. And there is a hardware solution as just previously mentioned, the Smart Mic SM1000 for a very simple way to get on the air if you don't want to tie up a computer for that matter. So some key advantages here, and even a couple of minor disadvantages. Uh, major advantage is no static to listen to. You can turn off the normal noise you might hear on the HF bands. Uh, the hissling, the crackling, the static crashes, <laughs> thunderstorms in the area, things like that, to where it's just total silence until a voice comes out of the speaker that's being decoded. Uh, it is very narrow bandwidth, as previously mentioned. Uh, you can use your PC microphone. So that really does open the door for a lot of different opportunities for what you can use to interface the analog side of the audio. Uh, meaning you could have a standard PC headset that might plug into your microphone and speaker connector on the side of your computer. USB headsets make that a very easy win because that gives you an audio interface right there. Bluetooth headsets the same way, plenty of those available today. Also speaker phones. Uh, I use a couple of different speaker phones plugged into my computers and I can have audio from one side going to the other and uh, things like that if I want to have more of a hands-free type operation. It's very easy to load new versions as new software versions come about. Uh, it's simple upgrade. All your settings are typically kept intact, so you don't lose any of the configuration settings. Some of the things to think about uh, for a, a potential disadvantage, and I don't want to necessarily say that's a major disadvantage, but just something to be uh, watched for. Hardware solutions might lock you into uh, vendor supported format, might take a little bit longer to get updates, uh, things like that as, as uh, the technology evolves. So just be aware of some of those things. Uh, that's certainly not something you have to worry about with the FreeDV side, because again, it's open source, it's always available for lots of different ways to do that. I will mention uh, one of the things that slow people down uh, with FreeDV specifically and the software configuration. We'll go through some of those slides shortly, but it takes a few minutes to set up the audio mapping uh, because uh, we actually have two sets of audio mappings uh, where we normally would have only the digital side if you're using something like WSJTX or one of those other applications. Uh, FreeDV also has the analog component where you speaking into some device and listening from some device. Uh, hardware required, uh, as I was just talking about the AOR 
devices. That's a physical appliance device. D-Star integrated in many of the D-Star radios are the ICOM radios out today. Or you can use a, a dongle, a D-Star dongle or something like that. A thumb DV USB device from Northwest Digital was a very popular one. This was the device that plugged right in the back of the flex radios and gave you the ability to do D-Star right from those flex radios. The free DV requires a second sound card interface of some type. Um, and that gets a little bit confusing. So I wanna be a little clear on what that means. So you normally have a sound device in your computer today either your integrated sound card or something else. And then the second interface needs to be something like a USB headset is a quick way to do it. Uh, can be a secondary adapter, sometimes a USB dongle headset, and you plug a headset into that. Then there's also the virtual audio cable is another solution, uh, especially with SDR radios. You typically have some form of virtual audio cable. And this makes for a very simple way to interface with that. Uh, the SM1000, as, uh, as mentioned previously, 3DV solution there, no PC is necessary for that, much like the AOR device for, for that method of digital voice. Here's where the software uh, can be found at www.freedv.org. Uh, at that website, you can pull down any flavor of software you need based on the operating system you may be using. The virtual audio cable, if it's necessary, can be found at this link. You may not even have a need for that. Just really depends on your particular setup, I guess. So here's a couple of screens of what things may look like. In this case, this was Power SDR. Uh, running on my uh, HP SDR HF radio for many years. Uh, as you can see over on the lower right hand side, it's uh, set to 1.5K over here. So very, very simple, narrow bandwidth. Here's what it looks like today on my flex radio. Uh, you can see the free DV client up there in the top left. Uh, we'll go into a lot more detail here in just a moment. And then the simple HF side of the flex radio uh, using uh, a narrow bandwidth. In this case, I actually have the bandwidth set to 2K. It can be uh, uh, smaller than that, of course. The 1.5 is all that's really required. It is nice to expand that just slightly more than what's necessary to help compensate for uh, some people that may not be exactly on frequency or slightly off if Perhaps maybe they have an older radio or something like that. So having a little bit wider than what's necessary is, is very handy. So configuration is. I really wanted to drill this home uh, quite well because this is the area that typically trips more people than anything uh, because of the two sets of audio configurations. In this case, you notice at the top, this is your input to computer. So the top side is the digital side you know, of what's coming from the radio to your computer. The bottom side here is your analog side. So what's coming out from the uh, computer to your speaker or headphones, whatever the case may be. In my case, I'm using a, a speaker phone. And then for the transmit side, there's a tab there at the bottom you can see. And then we do just the opposite when we go into the transmit configuration, where the top side is your microphone to computer. This is your analog side, uh, what device you're gonna use to speak into. In my case, again, it's the speaker phone. At the bottom is your digital side, which you're gonna send to your radio. Uh, in my case, being a, a DAX audio interface, could be a signal link codec, things like that, depending on what your configuration is. <clears throat> this here is your, your push to talk side, uses a Hamlib library, 
pretty common in most of our newer software configurations today. Uh, in this case, it's set up for Kenwood TS2000, the COM8 device, uh, and then your serial rate. Uh, and this is kind of break down through some of the other screens. It's worth mentioning, uh, as I highlight a lot of these uh, settings here, this doesn't mean this, you have to go through all of these configurations. <clears throat> there are many of this that's already set for you by default, but it, I wanted to mention it here just so that if you happen to be walking through this software, uh, that it won't be quite as strange to you when you see it. In this case, the text message box up there, <clears throat> very, very handy there. You can put in any kind of a message you want up there so that at the person on the receiving end, they have the option to, uh, depending on what mode they put their software in, they can see that text uh, of what you're doing. Sometimes you may not get enough signal to decode the audio, but you do get enough to decode the text at times. So that's very handy. Uh, this is a new feature as a very recent, the PSK reporter. If you have that option turned on, you enter in your, <clears throat> your call sign and your grid square. And with this, you can uh, show up on the PSK reporter sites. If you want to search for anyone using FreeDV on any band or anything like that, very nice, quick and easy way to do so. This here is for the display, the waterfall display, where you get a, uh, you can have a multicolor version or you can have uh, black and white. Uh, it can also be uh, a blue tint. So it's kind of a personal preference. Uh, here is the voice keyer method. This is very handy for being able to create a canned message, like a CQ message in my case here. <clears throat> if you don't want to actually be transmitting, you can just play this file back and it will call CQ for you. Uh, <clears throat> you also have the ability to set your, uh, how long the receive pause is. How long the receive pause is between those CQ messages. Also, <clears throat> also the repeats, how many times it will re-repeat that message before it backs off and gives up. <clears throat> a key one for this also is that this will, if someone answers your CQ message while you're calling CQ in between that, it will actually back off. The software is smart enough to detect someone is trying to answer you and it will automatically stop this CQ immediately. So that's very, very handy and allow their voice to come on through, of course. <clears throat> this is a brand new feature. Uh, I really wanted to highlight this one. Uh, a key one here is a simultaneously decode of all HF modes. Uh, you'll see in just a moment, I'll show you this, uh, but uh, it'll make more sense shortly. Uh, but uh, in the past, where you saw a signal in the band, you had to do, you had to try to determine what mode they were using and then match that mode before you were able to decode that station. So now there's a, an option here to make that very easy and take that problem right away. And you can actually be talking back and forth to each other with different modes, but because the software now can automatically decode whatever mode is coming through, uh, certainly makes that very nice, uh, a lot quicker for us to make contact with others. Uh, this here is a simulation mode, not used very often, but for special test cases, if you had a need to create channel noise or send test frames and things like that, you have uh, plenty of ways to do that, uh, just to see how well the software is holding up under various band conditions and such. Uh, then the, uh, the UDP message, this uh, part is kind of half baked into the software. Uh, the the uh, intention of this uh, has not been completely implemented. The software side is ready, but the other piece of this is not quite ready. 
but the purpose of this was that as a user came up on FreeDB uh, running the software, it would automatically send a message to the QSO finder that I'll talk about shortly and let people know where you're at and that you're on the air and things like that. So not, uh, not implemented completely yet, but it's, uh, it's in the works. Uh, this is a special debugging feature. Again, something most of us don't ever worry about, but for uh, those doing the simulation and diagnostics and such, the uh, option is here available for, for doing some of that. Uh, this is another great feature, the, um, uh, the filter here. This is uh, actually very excellent for being able to tailor the audio that you're receiving and or the audio that you're transmitting for your particular uh, ears, I guess, and or your sound card device. Because what I've been able to do personally is, is take the most inexpensive USB dongle, $3 USB dongle, plugged into a computer and a very, very inexpensive PC headset there, as well as the most expensive Heil headsets you can find. And I can make them sound exactly the same uh, because of using an equalizer like this right here. So that's very, very nice feature uh, in the software. Many people don't even bother with this. Uh, but it, it can make it a lot better depending on your listening preferences. Now, this is a very good chart that breaks down the different modes uh, and some of the uh, actual technical characteristics of it. Uh, I pulled this down off of the uh, actual FreeDB uh, website of David Rowe, the author of FreeDB, uh, specifically the Kodak 2 part of this. But you can see on the left-hand side, the mode 1600, that was our most prevalent mode for many, many years. Uh, the FreeDB software has only been out since 2012. So it's been coming along quite a bit since then. As you can see, the, like something like the 700C mode in 2017, and then the 700D mode in 2018 that we used for a couple of years. And then more recently, the 700 E mode came out very late last year. And then there's a 2020 mode uh, that came out in 2019. We don't use 2020 mode very often, uh, but it does have the best audio quality of all of these. Uh, really has much richer audio, uh, but probably uh, the more reason we don't use it as often is because it takes a little bit more um, a higher end computer to be able to use that. And sometimes uh, that doesn't always work for others or they don't have that kind of setup. So we spend the majority of our time using the 700E and the 700D modes. But you can see further on the right, over here under the SNR minimum here, this kind of gives you a feel for the quality of signal that it takes to be able to decode these particular modes. Uh, some are better than others, as you can see, and, and as you can see, especially with 700D working all the way below the noise floor down to minus two, really gives that a, a strong enhancement. And especially more today, as many of you are quite familiar with how the band conditions have been lately, it's been really, really difficult to carry on a, uh, a quality conversation for any length of time with the band's racing up real nice and high and then falling through the floor very quickly moments later. So this is what the software looks like when it's in the transmit mode. It shows you your signal, your audio level, and things like that. Uh, in the top left, specifically, this is your SNR measurement. Um, while it's in transmit mode, it doesn't mean anything to you, but you'll see that here in just, uh, in just a moment on the next slide here. This is what it looks like when it's in receive mode. On the left here, you see mode 700E. So as the software rotates through all of these different versions over here on the right, it's scanning through all of these different versions, trying to lock onto something until it does. And then it tells you what it is over here. It measures the signal to noise ratio, the top left corner. 
in this case, a 15 being a very, very strong signal, of course. The top right here has a squelch level. You can set that to how low you want to go down uh, in uh, SNR and accept the signal coming through. Uh, now, sometimes as you get that set too low, you start getting some false signals. Uh, the software trips up thinking it's trying to decode something and you hear some some popping or something like that might come through the speaker. The transmit attenuation, a very handy feature. If you find that you're overdriving the digital side of your radio a little bit too hard without having to go into the Windows configuration or your Linux side, whichever audio device uh, you might be using, you can adjust the level down right there quick and easy and bring your, your noise uh, drive down quite a bit there. And here's another example of receiving signals. And you can see the wide signal here. This was a 700E mode. And then you can see it transition to a 700D mode. Uh, another nice feature of this latest enhancement is that as I mentioned, it's scanning for all the different digital modes. Well, in addition to that, you can change in midstream while you're transmitting to someone and cycle through all of the different modes very easily. The QSO finder, this is uh, an extremely nice place to visit when you're starting up FreeDV for the first time or any time for that matter. It lets people know where you're at and where you're operating. You see down here in the bottom, there's presets. Uh, these are the common frequencies uh, that people have been using in the past. Uh, I would say 99.9% .9 of all activity is done on 14.236 on 20 meters. That seems to give us the largest coverage for most of the United States. Over in Europe, they have a net uh, in the UK every afternoon, I believe it is, at 4 p.m. Uh, their time on 75 meters. So it really does depend on where you are, where you're trying to reach out to. As we all know, band conditions are different, different times of the day and such. And we've been trying to work up a lot more activity on 40 meters and even some 17 meters at times, uh, just re really depending on how nice the bands are to us uh, that particular day. At the bottom down here, you can see the call signs of other stations that have linked in. And if you click on one of those call signs, it actually breaks out a lot more detail on the bottom of this page. It tells you more about where that person is, where they're located, and a map to their location if you really want to see them on a map, and sometimes their email address. So here I want to put in a few reference links uh, where the FreeDV software is available, the uh, www.freedv.org. The QSO finder, that's very important, as I mentioned, if uh, someone needs help uh, uh, with their configuration, that's a great place to go. Or more importantly, just let people know where you're at uh, so others can turn their beams their direction uh, towards you in hopes of uh, helping make a, a contact of some kind. Uh, virtual audio cable, if you should happen to have a need for that. There are some quick startup guides, YouTube videos at the freedv.org website. Uh, a great place to visit and just check out some of the examples out there. Uh, a link to the SM1000 interface page if you have an interest in a, in a hardware solution and as opposed to the, uh, the Windows or Mac or Linux software that we were talking about earlier. Uh, my email address right here, if you should have any questions that I might be able to help answer for you or drop in on the QSO finder, you can reach me at the Walter H at K5WH.net address. And I definitely wanted to bring up uh, the authors, the guys that really made this possible. David Rowe uh, in Australia there, creator of Codec 2 and the original modem software for this. And Dave Witten, uh, creating the FreeDV GUI interface for us. So they did a fantastic job pulling all this together for us many years ago. And then equally important, I wanted to make sure that I gave a special shout out to uh, Muneer Salem. K6AQ has been outstanding in creating many new enhancements 
and some little minor bug fixes along the way, some interface, GUI interface cleanup uh, presentation side of things, uh, really enhancing the software a great deal all the way around. So that's been very, very nice. So that kind of covers all of the slideware side of this. So uh, as I mentioned here, enough of the slideware. Let's uh, let's take a shot at what it sounds like and show some uh, some live playbacks of uh, previous conversations and things like that. And maybe you can hear a little bit more about how FreeDB works. So this is an example of how we can play back previously recorded captures and you can hear what it sounds like from my side listening from my station i'm located in houston texas and this example here the station is in indiana as we play back this one a little dead right now and so i i should uh, not really concentrate on it so as i said in the past this is much more fun so I'm going to say heaven tree for the moment, and then uh, see what else you can drag up there. And I'll uh, keep it with you. Uh, pretending I'm working. K5WHM9F. <laughs> okay, and this next one is a copy of a station in Austria. Uh, this was captured a couple years ago. Uh, very incredible to get overseas. Uh, it seems uh, digital voice overseas has always been a little bit of a challenge because it does take a little bit more uh, of a higher quality, a little bit slightly stronger signal at times uh, to get through. Uh, so here's a, is a good example of some of the selective fading that takes place and yet the voice is still able to make it through for the most part as well. Uh, I'm uh, QSB. Your signal here is S5 to S6, S5 to S6. And the SNR is just uh, staying at zero. The SNR is at zero, but I can get about 70% uh, of the transition decoded here. So uh, the 700 D mode uh, seems to work uh, very good. Yeah, notice how in the waterfall there you see almost like barbershop polling <laughs> in the in the uh, viewer there. Uh, so that's a that's a good example of how conditions can be pretty rough, but yet the voice does seem to make it through uh, most of the time. Uh, here's another playback there. GPP of Echo Street of Bravo Bravo for uh, Kilo 5 Whiskey Hotel. And uh, there's also a uh, baby girl in VK5 DTR is uh, on the QSO finder at the moment. But you can't hear anything on, on the frequency. Propagation to, to Australia is not, not, uh, not a big moment. I want the new signal. <laughs> And those are just short clips. They're usually about less than 30 seconds uh, as far as the way that it, it uh, gets captured. Uh, six, uh, uh, I would six, oh, oh, uh, you can see I will try to look at what it means to it was really a long pass. Um, okay, please, and thank you very much for your interest, and uh, hope to meet you again very soon, Walt. Whiskey, uh, Kilo 5 Whiskey Hotel, always reach you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, we have just a couple more here I want to play for you. Hey, uh, Anthony. And we had some rain all day today, kind of up and on, but no, nothing great. So here is some, here's some uh, audio for you. 
And that station is in Florida. And one more here. I know that was about uh, Walter. So, um, why are you copying me? Um, and uh, you, you said, I'm good here. Um, zero bears. W-E-N-T-L-H-W-4-B-C-S. So there we have it. A few examples of what the signals can sound like. Uh, sometimes it's stronger than others. So I encourage everyone to give it a try, light it up, see what it can do for you. And most importantly, I hope you have fun and thank you very much. <laughs>